Hi, my name is Kent Keith, and I serve as president of Pacific Rim Christian University in Honolulu. I understand that you've been studying servant leadership and reading Robert Greenleaf, and that's great. Servant leadership has been a passion of mine for nearly 30 years, and I'm always happy to talk about it. I've been asked to talk specifically about the impact servant leadership has here at PACRIM. One of our uh, objectives as a university is to prepare servant leaders for the ministry in the marketplace. In accordance with that objective, I teach both an undergraduate course and a graduate course in servant leadership. These are hands-on application courses. They're founded on scripture and we ask our students to do uh, actual hands-on application project. We ask them to identify and meet a real need in their families, their churches, um, the university or the larger community. Servant leadership has an impact on our organizational structure. We do our best to, to follow a teaching of Jesus that can be found in all three of the synoptic gospels. For example, in Matthew 20, verses 25 to 28, we see Jesus gathering the disciples around him and he says, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We draw two messages from that. One is that we shouldn't lord it over people. We should uh, be uh, as little, have as little hierarchy as possible. And the second is that we should be servants when we lead. As you know, Robert Greenleaf launched the modern servant leadership movement with the publication of his classic essay, The Servant as Leader, first in 1970, and then he revised it and republished it in 1973. Robert Greenleaf tried really hard not to connect servant leadership with a religion, but he was very familiar with the Bible and he followed the teachings of Jesus pretty closely. For example, Robert Greenleaf was not very hierarchical. He argued in favor of a team of equals. Now he said there'd be a first among equals, a, a, team leader has a little more responsibility and duties than some of the others, but when he drew his organizational diagram, he had everybody on the same level. We also know that Greenleaf said that servant leadership starts with a desire to serve, that you have to have a servant's heart, you need to be a servant first. So his writings really are consistent with the teachings of Jesus. We try to follow this teaching of Jesus by not being very hierarchical. Uh, in our organizational structure, we have only two levels. We have team leaders and we have team members. That's it, just those two levels. The team leaders are the president, the vice president for academic affairs, and the vice president for student services. I have some additional duties as the president because I'm responsible to the board for the overall operation of the university. But otherwise, the three of us team leaders do much the same thing. We, we coach, we guide, we facilitate, we, we set goals, we, we provoke, um, we work shoulder to shoulder with our, our team members in accomplishing our work. Within each team, of course, there are people with different backgrounds and expertise and at different salary levels, but no team member supervises or tells any other team member what to do. Every team member reports just to a team leader. So within the team, people work shoulder to shoulder, offering help and information to each other back and forth as needed. That turns out to be a very nice structure for making decisions, because when we want to make a decision, we don't have to send an idea up through several level, levels of bureaucracy. There's just two levels. It's easy to get together, sit down, have a discussion, and make a decision. We don't have any offices or departments. An office or department would sound like a unit, a separate unit within a team, and we don't have separate units within the team. Um, so for example, we don't have a business office, but we have a director of business operations. So you don't go to an office, you go to see a person. We also don't have um, a president's cabinet or executive committee. The president and the vice presidents, we talk to each other regularly. Our desks are only a few feet apart from each other, so we talk often. Uh, but when it comes to formal meetings, we meet really in a committee of the whole. It's the whole staff that meets at the same time. We only have 21 part-time and full-time staff members. It's easy to get us into the same room talk about issues, question and answer discussion, uh, come up with some ideas that we can implement. We share a lot of information. Uh, for example, the budget uh, is developed in an open process, and when it's done, anybody can see it at every detail level. We don't share individual salaries, but everything else is available for people to look at and track. We have a staff committee that from time to time reviews the staff handbook and comes up with ideas as how it might be better or comes up with questions and things we need to clarify. We try to stay away from um, status symbols that are hierarchical. 
For example, nobody has a private office. Uh, all of our desks are out in the open. We don't even have cubicles. Uh, we're out where everybody can see everybody. And we don't have any reserved or assigned parking stalls. Um, we have some parking spaces in front of our office. They just go to whoever gets there first, first come, first serve. When it comes to salaries and benefits, um, our salaries are really in a fairly narrow range. By that I mean that the president doesn't make a whole lot more than the vice presidents and the vice presidents don't make a whole lot more than other full-time team members. So we try to keep that narrow. Uh, when it comes to benefits, every full-time or part-time staff member is offered health insurance. We pay the full amount of the health insurance for the individual team member. And we have a retirement plan and in our program, when the university makes a contribution, puts some cash in the team member's account, uh, we don't do it on the basis of a percentage because then those who are earning more would be getting more. We give everybody the same dollar amount. So that's a really quick overview of servant leadership at PACRIM. Thanks for listening. On behalf of all of us here at PACRIM, blessings and best wishes as you continue on your servant leadership journeys.